Hi YouTube and Happy New Year. Today I'm going to do a quick presentation about why I think Forth is a great programming language to use, especially for hacking, tinkering, and using systems that have really limited resources like microcontrollers. I did a quick search on YouTube for any videos like this, and surprisingly I didn't find anything, so hopefully this is useful to a lot of people. As far as myself, and my use of Forth, I started with it around 2005 when I was looking for a good programming language for Palma systems, and there was a really nice environment called Dragon Forth that I used a good bit. And since then, I've used Forth in MS-DOS and Linux for hacking on a variety of machines, and in, and in the future, I hope to use it more with microcontrollers like the Atmega 328, the Arduino, ESP8266, and so on and so forth. So with that background, I'll give you the first reason that I think Forth is a great programming language to use, and that's its reliance on the stack and reverse Polish notation, both of which should be incredibly familiar to anyone who uses an HP calculator. For those who aren't, I'll explain what both of these things are. So the stack is where data is manipulated in any for function or word as it's called. And this is a first in, last out, last in, first out type system. As you, you know, enter a number in your fourth interpreter, it goes on the stack. You put another number, it goes on top of that. And whatever you put in last comes out first. This is great because when you're writing a subroutine, you have to think parsimoniously in terms of stack manipulations. And I guess in a way it's analogous, kind of sort of, to having uh, local variables inside your function. Although there are variables in forth, there's you know, these quick operations you do within your words or the you know, basic subunits of forth code. So the second thing I, I mentioned was reverse Polish notation. This is weird for humans because, you know, we know the order of operations, 1 plus 1 is 2 and so on. Well, in fourth, 1, 1 plus gives 2. Why do things in this postfix manner? Well, this makes more sense for a computer first to have the data in place and then to know what operation to perform. So this is a lot easier and quicker for a computer to process compared with a human and thus it allows for faster mathematical operations. So what's the second great thing about fourth? It's an interpreter, it's a compiler, it's an operating system, and it's an IDE. It's a whole operating system all in one. I think one of the things that astounded me about Forth when I first started using it is it's interpreted, but it's also compiled. And you can see that and everything else I mentioned illustrated in this uh, picture from, from Thinking Forth on the left, where these two people are noticing that Forth's both a low-level and a high-level language as well as an operating system. You can even easily integrate machine code into Forth, and it's just a step more complicated than assembler. On the right, I have an illustration from thinking Forth in the top, and then starting Forth on the bottom for how the compiler and interpreter in Forth work. The first one on top on the right is just showing you how the compiler handles different words, whether they need to be compiled or immediately executed. And then the bottom shows the difference when you're writing for it for what a compiled word would be versus a word that you're um, executing in the interpreter. When you define a word to be compiled, you start with a colon word, the name of it, yards to inches, and then the next words that manipulate the stack. So you take whatever's on the stack, put 36 on top of that, and then multiply that to convert whatever was on the stack presumably yards into inches, and then the same thing below that for feet to inches. Fourth, though, is also an interpreted language. So when you don't have the colon definition, you know, you've put in your semicolon that ends the definition of the word, and you just want to execute something, you can enter in a number that goes on the stack, 10 yards in this case, do that yards to inches operation, that multiplies 36 by what was on the stack, and voila, you see there's 360 inches in 10 yards. So you can interpret 
these words, but they execute very quickly because they're compiled. It's not an interpreted language like BASIC. It's an interpreted and compiled language. Super cool. It's also an operating system and an IDE in the sense that there's memory operations, there's disk operations, there's an editor, there's the ability to go through the dictionary, which is the list of all the fourth words and look at the definitions of those. And in more advanced fourth systems, there's even, even help that you could access. Now, a third strength of fourth is, is three different higher level concepts that kind of go together factoring, abstraction, and extensibility. In general, when you write a structured program, you think in terms of subroutines. You have all these tasks, tasks that you do, and maybe there's a subtask that you do repeatedly, and you, know, you can nest these different subtasks. So that's one part of factoring, but I think the key thing in the principle of factoring that you use a lot when you're writing fourth code is you think very carefully and parsimoniously in terms of how many subtasks it takes to solve your problem and complete your program. And you think about how few operations you can get away with with each subtask. And if you haven't already thought about that, it I think just the process of, of doing factoring when you're writing a fourth program helps you define your problem very cleanly. So that's the idea of factoring. So what do I mean by abstraction? Well, fourth has a really simple syntax. It's just words and spaces, pretty much. It's very simple data types and data structures, just variables and arrays and, and putting bytes in memory. So if you need more complicated lexicon or data types, you can define that with incredible flexibility. In the middle is an illustration from thinking forth as well that's of a robot that's pouring coffee and showing the different layers of ab abstraction in a fourth program that would control that robot. There's the robot process lexicon and its movement lexicon and then below that the words that would be used for trig conversion and reading sensors and then controlling stepper motors. So different layers of languages that at root are expressed in forth but are all built up upon fourth words. Is building up. Now that gets to extensibility. Fourth systems can be really small. The pygmy fourth system I use in MS-DOS is about 10k and then you build new word definitions on top of that. It's a very easily extensible language and you can easily break it apart into different modules say that you find in a word processing application in this illustration on the right from starting fourth. Now, fourth and final advantage to using fourth, fourth advantage for fourth, haha, are its portability, its high speed and low memory usage. It can truly run on anything. It could run on a washing machine, theoretically. On the left is this humorous illustration of a fourth word from starting fourth for running a washing machine. It washes, it spins, it rinses, and then it spins. And it seems funny, but if we imagine this washing machine had an LCD display and complicated controls and maybe an ARM Cortex or Teensy board in there, you could probably write a fourth word on your washing machine to control the washing machine. Maybe someone out there has done that, and you ha if you have, please let me know in the comments. Another example of how great fourth is as a as a quick and portable language was its use in many space applications. The one I'm showing you in the middle is the remote manipulating system simulator. Well, what's the remote manipulating system? That's the space shuttle robot arm used to operate on satellites. Now there was a copy of it used for training at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland and a team had 60 days to design the software to run this, this equipment and, and all, its, all its computers, coordinate both together. And they wrote this in fourth with some C as well, and were able to complete it, and astronauts who already used the RMS could use the RMSS with just a few minutes of explanation of the differences. So that's one fourth success story. And then just going into applications that 
you all might be with which you all might be more familiar. On the bottom right is a fourth development system based on the Atmega 328, so an Arduino-like system with all its GPIO pins exposed. You could drive LEDs from that, and 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 in a interpreted way, immediately interact with different devices and and tinker with that microcontroller without compiling code, uploading it to the system, and, and so on. So with that, I finish my presentation, and I'll leave some further resources in the video description, also justifying forth and giving some nice tutorials for the language. All the pictures in the presentation were from the great book Starting Forth and Thinking Forth by Leo Brody, which are great tutorials by themselves. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. I have some other videos shown on the panel below that you might like to enjoy. And once again, thank you for watching.